Good afternoon. Please sit down. We continue our daily master classes, but before master class starts, if you know what you should do, you need to make everybody go to the pocket and the mobile. So it's easy for take out your wallet. Yes, Moody's a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> we will speak about them later. <laughs> <laughs> because cash it alone needs donations. Okay. So we are ready. So it's really a great pleasure and privilege to introduce our master class today. It's wonderful friend, colleague, uh, violinist, pedagogue, all the uh, compliments which you can ask for. Ilya Kalev. You, you would like to say something else, right? You, you have to say something else, right? No. Okay. Can I just say, yeah, it's wonderful to see you all here. Uh, my request is, request, yeah, that if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask them at the end, because there's no way that within the format of any masterclass, no matter how clearly stated, some things remain in a fog. And so if, if anything is, after we're done, if anything is unclear, I will ask you, please raise your hands confidently and ask me questions. Mr. Kaler, what did you mean by saying that? Because it didn't make any sense to me or whatever. Or I heard somebody said something contrary to what you said. So I'll try to come up with, uh, with answer that would satisfy you and explain things clearly. Thank you so much. Please don't just sit there and be a passenger. Think of what, what, what you're interested in. Any specifics of violin technique, of any fine points of interpretation, of phrasing, dynamics, and so forth. Thank you.
Performance, beautiful. I really enjoyed it. At the end of your, of this moment, I forgot master class, and I am supposed to say something because I thought I should go backstage and congratulate you, and then say something, right? Okay, very beautiful. A uh, um, few things in general. Uh, this is, of course, very special piece in the violin repertoire. I know only another piece for me personally, that which is, has this kind of a unique fairy tale-like quality. It's a Shimanovsky first concerto which has this, it creates this atmosphere which is out of this world, really. And Prokofiev does it with much more economical uh, means than Shimanovsky, which is very lavish in use of harmony and orchestration and so forth. So at the beginning, of course, there is a sognando marking, right? I thought when you started, you tried to make music flow, as they say, a little bit too much. I can hear some overtones and undertones. I don't know whether it's, it's a correct, okay, they disappeared. Only when I, when I spoke, okay, I guess, it's my voice causes it. So uh, I think you should start really in a sense of being in a kind of a semi-dream. You see, the orchestra has, which is represented by Irina today, exactly. It's a bit like Brooklyn Seventh Symphony, except that is an E major. But this is a... So you don't have any determined pulse of the piece. And you in that kind of a, you know, transcendental state. You don't have to feel like, Die, that's my time to start. 
Yeah, eventually it will happen. But I think first it's like you wake up to something. And then you have this de delicious B flat. Eventually it turns into this interesting Barcarola. It's only when orchestra starts having the pulse, I think you should, you should go ahead with it. Before that, I mean, first you have is this, just cosmic vibrations in D major and... Uh, I had these dreams when I was a little kid, probably when I was three or four, probably you did too. When you were, did you have this flying dreams? <laughs> flying not like very high, but slightly above the earth, like you were like soaring above the surface. This is what for me it, it is. It's a very strong association at the beginning. And I think you should give yourself a little bit extra time at the beginning. Until C sharp comes. And then he, and then it gains that pace. Yeah, can we try that? Sorry, I just have my mute on. It's okay. Happens. <laughs> yeah, but don't try to be softer than the Roman Pope. I mean, play with normal sound. Uh, it's a kind of a humming sound. Yeah, it's not open singing sound, of course, right? But don't, don't try to fabricate any kind of a soft dynamics. Mm -hmm. Like you whispering. No, don't. And then, uh, and now it's steady tempo. substantial and a vowel sound that's it yeah yeah that was really, really beautiful just a suggestion of course this is what I I think this music is about. I didn't have any email exchange with Prokofiev, obviously, right? This is what, what my personal association is with this. Now, when it comes to C major and you have this beautiful contrapuntal line, I think every note should be very clear to the audience, even if they paid very for very cheap tickets at the end of the hall. So don't just play. Playing the tache, it has to be slightly enunciated, slightly pointed stroke. Yeah, maybe a couple of bars before that. Ilochka, she must be there. Body movements are a bit excessive. Yeah, I mean, uh, like you're speaking every note. Yeah, but don't work too hard physically speaking, right?
Yeah, that's great. I really appreciate that harmonic sensitivity that you take time before and you keep. Really wonderful. Now, this part, when you go to... I don't think it should be that aggressive. It sounded to me a little bit too aggressive. Whereas what it is, it's a parody on a Viennese waltz. If you look at the piano part, you'll see something very interesting. And now it goes into... Now... Yeah, it's a tampa. It's something you find like in the, the Rosen Cavalier by Strauss. Taratam, taratim, tarata. So treat it as a waltz, really. Yeah, because Prokofiev liked to utilize the traditional romantic era patterns, but he interpreted them a little bit different, right? So don't be so aggressive. It's a. passage down uh, down bow staccata which you did beautifully uh, it could be a bit more like this even with a little scratch I think it's like a cackling kind of thing you know what I mean it sounded almost too elegant you know what I mean can we start from uh, Second one is a ya pa 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 pa. Very kind of a graceful and elegant and refined, yeah. As a contrast, yeah. Can we try that? Right. Now, the second subject when it says recitando, right? Yeah, you have to, you know how to make faces, right? And you know, to be something like that, yeah. This is what Prokofiev was really good at in his music. Yeah, I think this is what it is. So don't try to make it more, civ more civilized or smooth or anything. Uh, not. This is a Venice classical music, yeah. That, that time when you do this little, you know, sit down, yeah? It's not that. So all this show, this that, all this wrong quote-unquote notes, mm -hmm. right? So this really stick out and, and make, make a kind of a, make a face. I 
would suggest immediately after you're done with it, it was not concerted stroke, Tara, pa, pa, para, you switch to detaché. Okay. Because it will allow you to produce more sound, yeah, because you're still in this part of the bow and you're jumping just a little bit too much. <laughs> Sound. Can we have that conbrio section quickly? suggest usually is to use a thumb position for the pizzicato because it allows you to naturally build longer phrase. Um, which you managed almost to do it's just more work, more effort. You might consider that kind of thing. Now, generally, development or whatever is uh, presents itself as development was really wonderful. I believe I don't have any personal, you know, evidence from the composer, but this was inspired by the. <laughs> the idea that the melody is on the top and everything else is accompaniment. So. I know he marked it all with accents, but I don't think you should uh, treat those accents as sfarzandi. Mm -hmm. They're more like elongated emphasis. Which is, of course, second subject, right? Sometimes it's a bunch of notes with accents, right? Mm -hmm. It's obviously a melodic line. When it goes to pizzicati, when this, you have this balalaika effect, right? I think it was a bit too fast. Because you arrive at the end, just before that interesting polyphonic thing at the end, a bit too fast. And it was difficult to hear, even in this relatively small mm -hmm. space. So... <laughs> Try that maybe from uh, from that spot. So this is it's always tricky. Second like Luzunov concert is the same thing. You have to treat it like if you would play it with. And when you play with the bow, you have to use your arm very actively. Right. 
it's very active, <coughs> very active art. You can't rely on your wrist or the finger to do it, you know? Yeah, can we try that? Yeah. Really loud. So it's a... Think you can do it now? Okay. I know it's a nuisance, physical sensation for you, but try it. That's already better. Now remember that the more resonance you produce when you go deeper into the fingerboard, because strings are much flatter here and they respond quicker. Here there's a more tension in strings, right? So you go really uh, almost in the middle of the fingerboard. That's the purpose of it. Sorry about this. So, uh, this one. Which Prokofiev starts sounding like Bartok a little bit. second which resolves into the unison if you could make more time like you're tuning violin in a kind of a strange way or untuning it and you just kind of a frozen yeah so can we try that some people go up like in the famous recordings of Isaac Stern he goes all the way in. your violin allows for a decent sound in that register, that's really great. Yeah? Can we try that? Sound. It's like people, two groups of people who sing single voice, but they're not singing, they're humming. With closed mouth. Yeah? Try it. out of it. 
even make them clothes so they still pictures. Magical moment, I think, in the whole piece, in fact, right? And I always get disappointed at why Prokofiev, because apparently he supervised the piano reduction. He didn't write. And this beautiful uh, flute solo. Uh, it's just so delightful. And you have just a boom, 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 nothing else. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, something completely different. I mean, completely.
so sorry. This, this is one of the weirdest places to stop, I know. But I wanted to hear the, what they call second solo. It doesn't really qualify as a development, obviously, right? According to uh, old Viennese classical tradition, you know, sonata form and so forth. Yeah. Beautiful play. You're very artistic, very musical, very sensitive, and so on. So what I would like to, just because we have such a limited amount of time, address. It's a contrast between two elements here, in my opinion. It's an Italian opera. What? Oh, I see. Nobody hears me. OK. I don't know whether it's advantage or not, but anyway. So two elements. One of them is Italian opera. And the other one probably is Italian circus. So when you commit juggling acts, yeah, when you start doing this. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and so forth. So, in a part which is upper, what you need really is a bel canto quality of the play. What is bel canto? Bel canto is a, is a technique that allows you to breathe continuously. In our violinistic language, it means that you don't allow any breaks in line. Of course, line is not line literally speaking, right? It has its own inflections, deflections, and so forth. But you don't allow sound. There's too much of this. Uh, yeah, which idea in terms of a phrasing shape is correct. But it's not the music that was written in the 17th century or 18th century. Yeah, by that time, Paganini, of course, used modern bow. We already know that. Yeah, yeah, he used probably different strings and so on. Yeah, but that's not. So the idea was to develop the quality of sound which would emulate as much as was possible at that point of human voice. I mean, we don't have any records of how people sang, but tradition being passed on, I mean, through, through generations through the 19th century probably gives us more or less clear, clear idea. So when you go, oh, so don't let the sound go. for this uh G-sharp is a kind of a shocking note. Yeah, it doesn't belong to D major, what we expect, right? He just sticks that note in into your face, you know? Yeah. Really make a point. So don't feel it that you have to pinpoint each beat. Yeah. Yeah, try it again. Beginning was excellent. Yeah, yeah. I think D sharp is the most important note. Take time on that note, and then you drive it forward. Right. Yeah. 
why I think, in my opinion, it's important, because it creates a sense of spontaneity. It's like you're making things up as you go. Of course, not completely. You have a plan, obviously, right? But when you have ta da 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 funny enough, when you play them exactly even, it chops up the bar into equal beats. And this is the last thing you want, especially when orchestra already gave you an idea. It's a sustained harmony, right? Yes. Now, can we go to this delightful tune? Oh. Yeah, when you, when you depart from F sharp, you have this E sharp, which creates this emotional tension. And it comes back to F sharp, and then it goes into opposite direction. Right. Of course, it has to be done. The timing should be very limited and, and controlled, yeah? Because you don't want to upset the pulse. You know, you can borrow time in advance. You, you, pom, 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 pom. Yeah, yeah, just don't let the sound go because you go to. Connect this to now. You have to give the whatever maestro you have there the opportunity to already generate the tempo before the bar line. So what I suggest uh, 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 So you re you re-enter the tempo before the bar line. Okay. Rather than ta -ra -ra -ra, and then you assume that somebody will catch you that somehow, yeah? Okay which could be problematic uh, for many reasons. Yeah, musical, political, artistic, whatever. <laughs> and for me personally, in the following section, this is more important. Rather than, because we already know what D major is. What is more interesting is this. Ta yeah. Can you try maybe from this point a uh, moment? Uh, so it leads into the next. But yeah. Right. Second beat of the bar. Yeah, try that. Yeah. This is what I suggest as far as as a stroke. Here, you have to imagine that you still play on the string. Otherwise, your bow doesn't spend enough time on a string here. When you go, uh, uh, I mean, it's all clean and perfect, but it's, it's a bit too chirpy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so bow should really, really spend time on a string. You're familiar with the recording of Zeno Francescati of this piece, yes. right? He was a great master of on the string, semi of the string strokes. So it's a. Uh, yeah, it's 
kind of off the string, but in fact it's on the string. For you, it's on the string. Ba, 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 ba. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so Bo doesn't jump too much of the string. Yeah. So okay. for you, the feeling should be like you play it on detache, okay. but in the wrong quote unquote part of the bow. Yes, which is lower. Okay. He ba, 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 ba. So the rest the stick of the bow will do the job. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> Second subject, please. So after you done with your <laughs> boom, and then uh, yeah, from that point. Yeah, you see the so phrase goes immediately to C sharp. Not ta 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 di. Yeah, wonderful, great. So don't do so much bow. Yeah, because faster you move the bow, faster the sound will die. So it's a. understand why you're going ta ra ta ta ra ta there are four quarter notes ti ra ra om ti ra di ya to yeah just something you don't have to repeat just something food for thought okay yeah now when you go <laughs> it's the same thing with the stroke after that don't go too fast i know you can play fast and this is wonderful okay. yeah but if you play in a much bigger space than this, at one point with orchestra, it could be a bit too chirpy. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just people don't won't have time to appreciate what you do. Okay. You know what I mean? So it's interesting because uh, uh, there's a common attitude, common perception that virtuosity is something which is when you do things fast and so fast you don't even realize it's like a fighter jet flying over your head. You know what I mean? Oops! It's already there. No, in fact, I think most effective thing is when you hear every note and you realize, well, it is fast enough, but I can hear every detail, every note, every shift, every jump, and so and so on. So you have to choose always a tempo which is slightly above the middle. You know what I mean? The, I think the first pioneer of that was Jan Kubelik, there was a famous Czech violinist, you know, who started playing all these Paganini fantastic pieces like La Molinara, the Del Corpino on the center, in a kind of a very reserved tempi, but he played every note. And that was a shock for audiences because they realized, oops, it's actually possible to play every note and be honest with the text, you know? So I don't think this is the case because it's not such a difficult section to do. Yeah, you can make. 
made. The Miranda can even release sound, but still sound continues. You don't let it die, die completely. Okay? Now, this section, to me, it's my only personal opinion. I don't claim to be the, the, the wisdom and truth in the last you know, instance, but the a young about speed it's also about it's a it's a spectacle you know what I mean it's an opera written for violin and you being all the characters in opera you know you being uh, you know male lover female lover you being all kind of evil guy you know what I mean everything else is there you being a chorus even sometimes you know so think about that okay. so that's why I, I always uh, people dismiss Paganini as a kind of oh it's a superficial it's it's a second rate third rate music no it's not it's just different idiom and you have to be able to treat it with the dignity and the respect and admiration and so forth. Beautiful playing. Thank you so much. Right. Because accent is a basic marking for emphasis. There's also sforzando. There's a rinforzando. There's all kinds of wedges slash carrots and stuff like that. So you have to understand things in, in context. Accent is when you make a point. You know, you may have a conversation with somebody, you make a point. Point is a dot, right? It doesn't mean you suddenly ah! scream out one, one, one you know, syllable of the word, right? I'm trying to prove something to you. What do you think? No, you don't have to scream at people. You just make a point. You make an emphasis, right? Sometimes accent can be very strong. But when you, you look at what composer used as far as a range of markings, you know, going from dot to wedge, you know, whatever, carrot, some people call it, Sforzando, rinforzando. You understand, oh, this is not the strongest emphasis he used. You know, so, and again, even sforzando, if it's a lyrical slow movement, it has to be treated with certain cushioning. You know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. Right. Okay. Anything else? Yes. As the girl know, what does she have in her head? Does she know what? Does she, what does she have in her head? Oh, that I, I would be paid much higher fee if I knew. <laughs> <laughs> I would have a session with her. I will? Okay, I promise. I, I promise to you. Yeah. Well, you're talking about images. You're talking about psychological picture of the piece. What, what is this, the whole idea of this movement? It's a great movement. Right? Oh, it is. One of the best concertos that I agree. That were written, you know, at this. What is this? What, what does it mean? Well, you, you can have a lot of ideas about this. I mean, knowing the rest of. I, I think that it's a factory. Could be. Of people. Right. Working. And for comedy. The, the head of the party or some kind of, you know. It was party. before party took over, but yes. that, but I, I, I understand, yeah. So yeah. why is she? Right, could be, could be. Yeah, do like we did in Yacht. Right, 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 exactly. But yeah. it, it came later. Yeah, could be. Because he writes Ricitando there. Yeah, yeah exactly. So you, you are now, you enunciate. Yeah, you, you project yeah. your speech. Sure. Right. Well, could be. What, 
do it safe. Right. Exactly. Could be. Yeah, sure. Well, Prokofiev loved those rhythms, which are very mechanical. He inserted them deliberately. Of course. Exactly. Right, right. Exactly. Well, Prokofiev wrote it in a very interesting year, 1917, which was a, which was a Russian, they call it Russian Revolution. It was a little bit more complex than that. And it's interesting that this piece is incredibly lyrical with all these edgy, abrasive moments. It still has this incredibly lyrical element to it. And Prokofiev was actually criticized by some critics for Mendelssohnisms, as they call it, believe it or not. I don't think it has anything to do with Mendelssohn. But Prokofiev was criticized that he was not innovative and was not shocking, uh, shocking enough. So this is, I find,